青春とは嘘であり悪であるフッ<笑><笑>俺は本物が欲しい So that was a lie. There are three major factors in a happy life growth, character development, and tsundere's. Someday, maybe. But when you mix all three of those into a dive of human relationships, this is what we call origairu. But what made this anime so special and stand out in a world full of competition? And why is it that snafu hits different? Let's find out. Back on April 5th of 2013, a modern classic would start to air. This classic, of course, is none other than Snafu. If you've never heard of this beauty of a show, well, first of all, why? Like, seriously, what's wrong, what's wrong with you? But still, if you haven't, Origairu is a must watch for anyone looking for the most relatable characters I've seen in a long time. And in watching Hikigaya's character growth, I myself have been inspired to actually start trying. What about you? Hachimon Hikigaya, I feel, is the epitome of what many people, including myself, experience. Not just at one point in our lives, but in life as a whole. At the beginning of the series, we see Hikigaya being a complete pessimist towards life and youth itself, and we can show proof of that with just one sentence or two in the first paper he hands into his teacher, saying, Youth is a lie. It's nothing but evil. Those who look to rejoice in their youth deceive themselves and those around them. Just from that one line in the first season, I could already relate to Hachiman on a personal level. I used to always think, what's the point in trying if I see no substantial results? It's truly pointless to exert energy on something you find no interest in. But slowly I feel as if I grew along with Hikigaya, Yukino, and Yui. Seeing this pessimistic attitude slowly grow out of Hikigaya as he experienced more social situations made me think it might just be possible for us to grow out of it as well. Though it's never really that simple, is it? One day, you decide to wake up and put yourself into a situation you're not used to, but unlike other people, you remain calm and come to a solution to help fix the problems of others, such as the volunteer club. However, it's a difficult task when you have a self destructive personality. This is just like Hachiman. He makes himself out to be the bad guy, assuming that it won't matter in the end, because to him, he's just a nobody, and being a self proclaimed nobody to him, None of his actions will impact him directly, since he's never on the top of anyone's mind. And if you've already seen up to season 3 being its end, then you know as well as I do that this is not the case. And that's when we switch to Yui and Yukino, or as I like to call them, best girl and almost best girl after Komachi, of course. Don't judge me. You, you know it's true. Just look at her. Admire her. You know you want to, but. Okay, moving on. As I mentioned before, it's not only Hikigaya that grows as the series goes on. We can also take a look at Yukino Yukinoshida, at first being the cold ice queen we love, into the socially awkward tsundere ish Yukino we grow to love even more. Yui, on the other hand, seemed to have the opposite effect on her, going from the social butterfly to realizing that, in all honesty, most of her friendships she has are, well, for the lack of a better word, fake. Seeing the friendship between the three, as well as the relationship aspect and conflict between Hikigaya coming to realize, he doesn't just want something genuine. He wants to be genuine alongside Yukino. Best girl for the win? I think so. Realizing this while continuously making himself out to be the bad guy creates conflict with the resolution with both Yukino and Yui. The two are genuinely falling in love with Hiki, but neither really understands how to express these emotions. And witnessing two introverts and a social butterfly come to the realization that when you put enough effort into something you truly care about, most often than not, the results will end how you want them to. Take this clip, for example. <laughs> This kind of thing takes a lot of mental effort, not to mention courage. Confessing any kind of emotion is a mental task that not a lot of people are up for. And this, along with the rest of the events in the series, are what makes these relationships between not just Hiki, Yui, and Yukino seem real, but all of the character relationships and interactions 
hit so much closer to home when they're portrayed in such a realistic way. I guess another way of putting it is, uh, this shit hits different. Honestly, it is really hard turning yourself into a person that's pretty much the complete opposite of what you're used to. Coming from personal experience, being an introvert is hard. You put on a false act of pretending you don't care what others think of you, but deep down you want someone to reach out to you when you don't realize it's actually what you need the most. And this is where I personally relate to Hikigaya and the others, and I think all of you might as well, maybe even more than I do. We find ourselves wanting to grow out of our inner shell like Hachiman has over the three seasons. We start wanting to see the relationship between the three of the main characters, and even side characters like Hayato, grow and experience their issues alongside them. Hachiman is allowed to revel in his world of being a pragmatic loner who often overcalculates things, yet somehow he takes up the responsibility of helping people, sometimes in a self-sacrificing way. But still, Origairu does not portray him as the unorthodox savior who's always right despite his unconventional worldview. In fact, most times, Hachiman is wrong, and even when he turns out to be right, it's often for the wrong reason. Such complexity in writing and character development is what makes Origairu such an engaging series. Without being forceful, Origairu manages to pass a message of self-development through the character of Hikigaya. In the course of the series, Hachiman morphs from being disinterested in social interactions to being concerned about the problems of other people and showing a sincere willingness to get the job done no matter what it takes, even if it does involve making the wrong choices. And then, of course, there's the romantic interest that Hachiman, of all people, eventually finds himself evolved in. Slowly, Hikigaya begins to learn what his advisor intended for him to know about the importance of social interaction. As he continues to interact with Yukino and Yui, he eventually decides that he wants something real for himself. He realizes that the truth was that he wanted to experience all the fun things about life that he always made fun of. His interactions with Yui and Yukino eventually allowed him to experience the warmth of friendship and love itself. Hachiman's story arc is a testament to the vitality of personal development, as well as experience what a best girl like Yukinan is truly like, with the time and effort it takes to break down her hard exterior, to see that deep down, Yukino is actually a softie. She also plays the love interest of Hikigaya, which adds to many colors of this awesome anime. The complicated love triangle that exists between Hikigaya, Yukino, and Yui is a feature that's been overly explored in many, many anime. But the storytelling and uniqueness of these characters made the romantic aspect of the anime a lot more compelling. By the way, who do you think was best girl in Origairu? If you can't tell, I actually have two, with number one being Yukinan, and the second being uh, Hiki's little sister, Komachi. Again, you can't blame me. But how do you guys rate Origairu on a scale of, let's say, 1 to 10? Just leave the number in the comments below so we can all see the different and similar fans there are of the series. If you happen to enjoy the video as well, be sure to smash that like button. It helps the channel and our little community grow. With that being said, I'm broken obsessed in my otaku ways, and I will see all of you lovely people in the next video.